It couldn't have been more than a few months ago that I told you that Google Nest speakers were losing some of their multi-room music features because of that Sonos lawsuit. And this also meant that setting up an older speaker was going to be harder for a little while. Well, now the app that helped you get those older speakers set up is no longer available on the App Store because of that lawsuit. And Google has not released an official fix for any of this. So we just lost features, and while I'm going to hand Google a serious thumbs down on this one, I'm going to give myself a serious thumbs up because I know how you can get these old speakers set up. You're not gonna like it, and that's part of the reason I get a thumbs up, because I'm going to need it after the abuse I'm going to receive in the comments section. Anyways, your solution is to talk to Google support. And this goes hand in hand with Google destroying another aspect of their own smart speaker. Google is stopping the actions program for developers, which means there will be no third party actions. And while none of us use them anyways, it's still a removal of a pretty big initial selling feature that they never really got off the ground. So thumbs down. What Google is planning to do is the smarter method though, because it uses the Google Assistant and app actions to execute things by voice. This should all come together next year with the Pixel tablet, which I'm pretty sure is a Nest Hub in tablet form. But I'm still not giving any thumbs up because this is a half-baked solution that isn't done. And I'm done giving Google any sort of thumbs up for anything until it's actually released and fully working. Which brings me to another thing Google is destroying on their own smart speakers and the Google Assistant, which is location-based reminders. They're dying an unceremonial death. So Google got three thumbs down for me in a matter of just moments, and I have to walk away from talking about them so I can talk about something happier. In much more important news, I drove in a Tesla Model X Plaid Edition, and it went something like this. <laughs> For what is almost a completely silent car, it is an absolute beast full of amazing technology. And at this point, I don't care about the political crap or climate change battles going on. I just have to give this car a thumbs up for being an absolute rocket ship on rails. Turns were aggressive but controlled, acceleration made me sick to my stomach, and the fit and finish was beautiful. Truly, it should be called the lightning car. And this is Brian's lightning round of Smart Home News. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to do just that by giving you all the latest and greatest from the smart home industry. And in just a few short moments. Each time I'll let you know whether it's something I like or I don't like, so you know where to head in your connected living journey. Just a month ago, I told you that Insteon fired everyone and closed all operations after the company ran out of money, which left 1.3 million homes with paperweight instead of smart electronics. But strangely enough, one of the previous executives has managed to cobble together enough funds to buy Insteon and has created a new company. This guy is now the CEO of Insteon. And as a company, they managed to get everything back online. So 1.3 million homes saved. Either way, this is a remarkable story and I have to give these folks a hearty thumbs up, a double thumbs up just for getting things going again and giving us all a little bit of hope. In case you haven't upgraded your television in about 15 years, then you might not know what this cable is. It's an HDMI cable and normally it carries both sound and picture to your television. However, there's a new specification coming out called HDMI power cable that will allow you to carry up to 300 milliamps at five volts. This could be used a lot of different ways and in many cases will eliminate the power cable for a lot of peripherals. So I am very excited to see this go forward. And an extra big thumbs up to the people developing this standard as it holds to the current HDMI 2 2.1a standard, as well as working with ARC and eARC ports. Which reminds me, many of you did not watch the video I produced that shows you how to use what I think is one of the most exciting new features available for your television. My two Echo speakers can be placed anywhere in my room and can be the output speaker for my Apple TV, my Roku TV, my Google TV, my Nintendo Switch, my PlayStation 4, or in the future, a PlayStation 5, and of course, my Fire TV. So while you might not be all that interested in a Fire TV stick itself, that video is worth watching and a serious thumbs up goes to Amazon for enabling this on the Fire TV 4K Max. 
Next step is 5.1, and then we're gonna take over the world, Pinky. But now I gotta beat up on Amazon a little bit because Ring raised their subscription prices and I can't see where the benefit is for anyone. And I also hate the idea of everyone just getting a bigger bill because Ring decided it was time to make more money. And the other thing is Amazon killed the cloud cam officially, which we all knew was going to happen eventually, but their replacement for it being a Blink Mini, it's a little like handing me a smart car after being in the Tesla. <laughs> Here are a couple of really interesting new products, including this gesture control Bluetooth Kickstarter called Vanzi. I think this could be a really interesting smart home control system with a couple of specific gestures and a really small product or something like, say, a smartwatch we all have on our arms. So this is something I do expect in the industry to be developed and a big thumbs up for this company heading down this path just that little bit. And this was sent to me by my friend Bing, who sends me all kinds of Apple HomeKit information, but what he sent me this time was called the Myth A1 Air Purifier. What's really interesting about this is not just Google and HomeKit connectivity, but it's the fact that you could wash the filters and reuse them. And I think this is something that stops more people than it's well understood from buying an air purifier because you've always got to replace the filters. If you didn't see our interview of the team at SwitchBot, then you will have missed out a ton of exciting announcements from them, including a home kit smart plug, a robot vacuum with a fan on it, blinds and shades, and a SwitchBot bot that works with this kind of switch. Two thumbs up to them for continuing to innovate. Plus, Signify just announced a big update with a lot of new products. Some are available just in the EU, and everything has different launch dates, but the Perifo is a nice new rail lighting system. The Hugo portable table lamp is expensive, but looks nice. There is a new version of the Signy with oak on it and something called the Shimento ceiling light. But maybe the most exciting product and the one I'm going to give thumbs up to is the new Hue Tap dial switch. Miros just released a new smart bulb that will have adaptive lighting in the Apple HomeKit app and is a 900 lumen smart color bulb. Akara gave us an update to their M1S hub that has custom ringtones and WPA3 support but not much else. And Leviton is releasing the Decora Smart Wi-Fi 2nd Gen Scene Controller Switch, which has three customizable buttons for scenes, as well as a smart switch that can control lighting or loads up to 15 amps. Last month, Wise released the Outdoor Cam V2 with the new improved Starlight Sensor, and now have also released the Wise Scale X, which includes a baby and a pet mode, and a new look. All of those products have interesting components to them and get a big thumbs up. This is a story that there's some questions about validity, but if you're out traveling this summer and you decided to go with an Airbnb or one of those short-term rentals, then you might want to have a look at the sprinklers. Now, this person caught uh, one of the cameras looking like a sprinkler, but the scary thing is you could actually purchase one of these on AliExpress. So regardless of the story being true, have a look around these Airbnbs to make sure that there's not cameras inside of alarm clocks or inside of USB chargers or wherever. This is where I think hotels make a lot more sense because could you imagine a hotel doing that and getting caught, what the fallout would be like? The SmartThings Edge driver program was rolled out officially just a little while ago and that means you can get a lot more products connected locally to that SmartThings hub. The good news is my friend Jimmy over at SmartThings Beat continues to find new products being added to that program. So two thumbs up to both SmartThings and Jimmy for continuing to get that program more attention. And if you didn't watch my video on how to use that, it's time to go local. Something else that Samsung gave us is the ability to reorder scenes in the automations tab in your SmartThings app. This was actually something you couldn't do before, which was strange to everyone except for the developers at Samsung. So I guess thumbs up to them for realizing. But for those of you with a Samsung fridge that has a family hub on it, Apparently, you can now get an update on the second version of those that allows your fridge to be a television. I would think that this isn't exactly a fantastic television and I don't know that I would even bother, but it's an interesting change and I gotta say I like it when a company turns any of their existing products into a television. Next step 
blenders? With the matter standard starting to come into focus and folks like the home assistant community showing off how those products will work, companies are now getting ready for the launch and IKEA was one of the first ones out of the gate. They showed us their new upcoming hub called the Didgeridoo and they will also be launching a new IKEA smart home app. Now, normally I wouldn't be so happy or give a thumbs up to a new hub, but what IKEA has done here is important as all existing smart products from Ikea will connect to either the old hub or the new hub. Also, your old hub can be brought into the new app or left in the old app. So there is nothing to complain about with this product except the name. It was Apple's time to invite all of the YouTubers and content creators that meet their criteria for their brand to their now, wait a second, it's a developer's conference, so why were YouTubers there at all? Sorry, that's just me being a little salty because Apple never invites me to go anywhere. But there are a few things that I can give a strong thumbs up to, as the new HomeKit Home app has been redesigned to the point where rooms are now all just below each other and you're not scrolling for four days to the right and to the left. Also, cameras are all in a side scroll layout. And those are both nice new improvements coming to iOS 16. But my favorite part of the whole HomeKit system has always been shortcuts, or at least since Apple has owned them. Similar to what Google is doing with App Actions, Apple has released their new App Intense API, which will allow more developers to build these little intents that can connect to shortcuts and therefore to Siri. While we won't benefit from this immediately, we know that Apple does take things with their apps in iOS very seriously. So I'm excited to watch this one give us more and more access to smart products with Siri shortcuts. After the first beta of iOS 16 came out, there was some talk that the Apple iPad could no longer be a hub for your HomeKit home. Apple clarified this situation recently by stating that you could still use your iPad, but only if you don't care about upcoming features associated with Matter. So I think that's okay, and Apple gets another thumbs up. Those of you who are building a smart home based off of Apple HomeKit have been spending far too much money for far too long, but I can tell you today that you actually have an option for an energy monitoring smart plug from a very reputable brand that won't cost you an arm and a leg. So thumbs up to TP-Link who did finally release their HomeKit compatible version of their mini smart plug and it looks like average pricing is around 12.50. For a long time now, I have used Patreon to communicate with fans of the channel and to give people some extra benefits. Just last month, I said it's time to stop there and let's convert to channel memberships here on YouTube. Not only do I wanna give a huge thumbs up to people who literally made it possible for me to continue making these videos by their support over on Patreon, and some of them are still doing it there. But I also want to give a huge thumbs up to those of you who have become channel members here on YouTube. And for those of you who don't know, that's what the join button is on any video, only on PCs apparently. And it gives you access to some extra benefits, like for members, they all had this news video earlier than our public launch. And we all love a good product dying, especially when it's created by what is the ultimate in evil corporations. Okay, that's just my opinion and I have to say that because they are evil enough to come after me. Just my opinion. But anyways, Facebook has finally given up on their portal device because they figured out no one was buying smart displays anymore anyways, and their market share was nothing because no one trusts anything they say or do. Again, just my opinion, not fact. So thumbs up to the company formerly known as Facebook for seeing the writing on the wall and getting the heck out of our living rooms. Sadly, one of my old favorite products named Smart Dry, which pun intended, seems to have lost some steam and ended up one of those dead products that you can no longer use. More and more, there's a trend I don't like in the smart home industry or in homes in general, and that's not just the fact that no one can afford a home because all the companies are buying them, but within that kind of a strategy, there's a number of companies building places with smart home technology already baked into it. ADT, which is a security company, 6% owned by Google, just acquired a company called IOTIS in order to further their development of properties with smart home and security technology already embedded. This is the kind of thing that ruins the DIY smart home and causes us subscriptions. So I'm giving it a big thumbs down, even though I know many people will enjoy this idea. 
Since you're here, I know that you're someone who really enjoys new technology or new smart home gear. And I do a video every month where I unbox all the latest tech and smart home gear that we get here on Automate Your Life. So check out that video up on screen now to learn all about the newest stuff available for your homes today. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And of course, don't hate Automate.